This episode of the Potterverse is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com. I am here for all of your beauty and skincare needs, my friend. If you are hoping to kind of up your skincare routine, maybe while you're home, you want to have some little spa nights at home and just take better care of yourself. Skincare is one of the greatest things that you can do to start with that. And I would love to help you find a customized skincare regime for you. Or maybe you're looking to jazz up your look a little bit. And one of the best ways you can do that is with mascara. This is the last month that we're having my favorite mascara, my 40 mascara is on 15% sale for any of our podcast listeners. You can head on over to minutewithmary.com slash discount. Providence, Rhode Island. Welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the film and book universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners and let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Everybody and welcome. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I am so sad that there's not a fly buzzing around right now, <gasps> borrowing its little teeny tiny head and legs into Mary's hair. Oh my god! I like showered on purpose right beforehand because I was like, I want to make sure there's no bugs in my hair for this podcast episode. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! An immediate was Hall of Fame moment, ladies and gents. Right off the bat. Oh, right off man. the bat. I could I couldn't get that up on the YouTube channel Hall of Fame <laughs> playlist. Faster, my my fingers were burning trying oh, to get that thing goodness. up there. Oh my goodness, mine were burning just with the trauma of finding a fly in my hair. My <laughs> goodness. Well, you know, now that I'm clean and I'm back and I've got no flies in my hair, I cannot wait to talk about this chapter because a lot of things continue to move in place. The trio gets a lot more solidified in this chapter um, of Harry Potter. If you are joining us live, do us a favor. Drop a little pumpkin emoji in the comments because it it. is Halloween, my friends. And let's just bring a lot of the Halloween joyfulness. So, um, of course, that is the chapter of this this chapter, the name of the chapter. Gosh, (laughs) man, I need a coffee, except I gave it up. Um, Yeah, what's funny is that in the, the Philosopher's Stone... Um, which I do have a copy of that. The Philosopher's Stone is hollow we apostrophe in. Yeah. That's actually how I put it up on the live feed. Uh huh. And I'm, that's how I'm going to put it up on the podcast. Feed. Very cool. Very cool. And then, of course, um, the American version of the Sorcerer's Stone, it is. Halloween as oh, we normally We're getting see pumpkins it. for days here. Yay! All right. <laughs> Nancy says the fly who shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, um, all right. So my quote is actually once again going to be rather on the shorter side because I just want to digest it for a hot second. Okay, what do you got? Harry then did something that was both very brave and very stupid. Oh, that sounds a lot like Harry to me. That's Harry. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't choose everything Stupid, but Harry does a lot of stupid. It things. also sounds like someone in my life that I know. It's pretty much a Gryffindor trait. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Very brave. Haven't thought it all the way through, though. Here we go. <laughs> We're just jumping in, ladies and gents. Yes. Feet first. Yes. Head first. Here we are. Here all we are. body first. I'm just. Kidding. That's literally what he does. He jumps on the troll. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Like, no big deal. He, he uh, continues on. He took a great running jump and managed to fasten his arms around the troll's neck from behind. The troll couldn't feel Harry hanging there, but even a troll will notice if you stick a long bit of wood up its nose. And Harry's wand had uh, Harry's wand had still been in his hand when he jumped. It had gone straight up into one of the troll's nostrils. So mm-hmm. it worked out for him a sounds, little. Sounds so yummy. Feels salty. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like that. Troll I feel bogeys. like it's salty. Troll bogeys. <laughs> it definitely, definitely is. So <laughs> before we get into this chapter, we would love to remind you to head on over to maryandblake.com to check out all of our other podcasts and blogs. If you yourself are just dying to kind of like pummel through these chapters, but we're not running at your pace, feel free to check out our other podcasts that we've done. Maybe they can keep you company during this time. Um, you can also find us and follow us on social media just by searching Mary and Blake. Hit the subscribe button in your podcast podcast feeds for the Potterverse. You can also take a moment to leave us a review and rating in there. Greatly, greatly appreciated. And lastly, I want to remind you of our complimentary texting reminders. You text the phone number 
Eight ten ten. That's right. Eight one zero one zero. And in the message at Elder Juan E L D E R W A N D with the at sign the beginning at Elder Wand, and you will be added to our complimentary texting. Service. Oh, and don't forget about jointhenerdclan dot com. Oh, yeah, where you get all of the great perks from Mary and Bleak, uh, including the after dark episodes and the soon to be, I think, after the after the dark arts episodes. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll you see know, how it goes. We, we never know how that goes, but you get all <laughs> uh, you get free swag and a bunch of different perks that Mary and Blake that we give you, the listeners who support us, and for as little as two bucks a month, you can support everything that we do here. So join the nerdclan.com, become a nerd, have some fun. Here we go. Let's get into the show. Here we go. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. Holy, holy smokes. We were going to start at the very beginning. <laughs> I think that might be a new tradition. To start. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so a lot happens in this episode. First starting things Chapter. off. Chapter. Chapter. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> Got to rework the, uh, the lexicon, kid. Gosh, you know, one day, one day I'll get it. Um, so this all takes place really in the month of October. Um Malfoy is upset because Harry still seems to be in school because he played that prank on him saying, oh, we're going to have a midnight duel in the trophy room and he never showed up. Harry gets a broom sent to him by what seems to be Professor McGonagall and she says, don't open it in front of the other kids because we don't want them to know that you have a broom because that's against the rules. But he walks right into Malfoy. And Flitwick's like, oh, yeah, I know we're breaking the rules for you, Harry. That's so cool. So Malfoy is completely upset. And it's a Nimbus 2000, which is like... It's the Ferrari. The creme de la creme <laughs> of... of uh, brooms right now um then harry gets to learn about quidditch so a lot happens in this that actually isn't halloween Mm -hmm. right away um and we learn about quidditch we learn about the chasers and the seekers and the keepers and the um oh my god the bludgers but the beaters my goodness gracious we learn about all the different balls we learn about the pitch we learn about the hoops all these things and goodness gracious harry does a really good job of just saying it out loud to remind himself because i would not have been able to do that and of course we learn the funny rules of quidditch where Pretty much, if Harry catches the snitch, they're going to win. Um, Then they go, and it's Halloween. And this is where, like, the real nitty-gritty stuff happens. First off, they wake up to the smell. This is where the nitty-gritty, meaning this is where I want to drool. They wake up to the delicious smell of baking pumpkin wafting through the corridors. Can we just take a moment... Where are my pumpkin spice latte lovers or just Out. pumpkin spice peeps? If you're a pumpkin spice person, write Out. that PSL in the comments below nope. if you're joining us live. Nope. I, nope. Out. <laughs> I love pumpkin pie. I love mini pumpkin pies. I love... What else do I love? I love like pumpkin... Oh my gosh, you pumpkin, pumpkin candles. Everything. Sign me up. Pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah. She's all about the pumpkin spice latte life. Yeah. Um, see, if it's seasonal drinks or seasonal candy, sign me up. <laughs> it's probably part of the reason why I don't like summer as much as I love the other seasons because there aren't seasonal fun drinks. Like, it's like, oh, it's summer. Get a nice coffee. That's boring. Where's the pumpkin spice? Where's the little red and green sprinkles that go on top? My we got some butter, butter pecan. That's not summery. That's summery. That, I feel like, is fall. Butter pecan? Yeah, that's yeah. like hearty and really sweet, and you want it in a pie. Yeah, maybe. So um, so this is what's happening. <laughs> They're There's smelling so much PSL everything. Action oh, right I now. love it. Everybody I love is it. going all the PSL life. They learn how to make objects fly with a little swish and flick, and when Gaudium Leviosa, or is it, how do you? Leviosa. But it's different in the book. Oh, yeah, is, isn't it? Didn't she say it's like, doesn't she say so when Hermione Gaudium or something? So Hermione says, in when Gaudium Leviosa, make the gar yes, nice yeah, yeah. and long. Yep. Um, so it's, you know, just a little bit, but we still get the swish and flick. And oh. of course, Hermione's feather flies in the air. And um, Seamus Finnegan, his his burns. So this is like the first time that he catches something on fire. Land the plane, I Helen. To have a fire count for him. What do you think? I think you need to land the plane. Oh, goodness. <laughs> They make fun of Hermione. Hermione ends up in the bathroom. Trolls in the dungeon. The boys go in, beat the troll. Boom. Good. Man. Like it. Yes, they should have a fire count. Yes, they should absolutely have the count on how many times Seamus almost blows himself up. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be a quick recap. Sorry. That's okay. I got you. There are a lot of things going on. Yes, there are. All right. So how about you take over? <laughs> okay. No problem. <laughs> The first thing I want to bring up then is 
Malfoy? No. Um, well, yes, Malfoy, but in di- more directly, I want to bring up uh, Professor McGonagall. Oh. And how inappropriate it really is that she's buying Harry not only a broom, which he's not supposed to have as a first year, on top of the fact that she's making an exception for him to be a seeker as a first year in Quidditch, which shouldn't be happening. Because girlfriend loves sports. But not only that, she's buying him a Nimbus 2000. I'm telling you, this is why she's a Gryffindor and not a Ravenclaw. She's got this really competitive edge where it's like, rules, schmules. Totally agree. Not as bad as a Slytherin. Like, she's not going to give all the Slytherin team puking pasties, Mm -hmm. but she'll get Harry, like, the best wand ever. Yeah, I I just, I find that... (sighs) Harry breaks these rules and McGonagall's just like, yeah, yeah sure. She whatever. doesn't go, yeah, yeah, you're sure all the time. I mean, we're going to see multiple uh, times in this book where he gets in trouble a lot. There's a lot of favoritism happening, I think, in this book. That's why the canon that I read last week just tugs in my heart <laughs> so much. <laughs> There's a lot of favoritism, especially at the end of this book. Good for him. Um, you know, his parents have died and he's been treated like crap. I'm glad someone favors him. Well, it's him. funny that you bring that up because I think that canon has changed. I my think life. it's an, I think it's an exercise almost in how to make a character uh, lovable because Harry, when you first meet him, is again sleeping on yeah. a cu- it's sleeping in a cupboard under the stairs, mm-hmm. and that was done purposely. That was done purposely by the Dursleys, number one, but really specifically, Vol- I'm not Voldemort, uh, Dumbledore. Oh, Dumbledore, okay. Dumbledore is the one who chose to do that. And, in, you know, obviously, <laughs> in, like in, indirectly, the author is the one who writes it and makes it <laughs> <laughs> and makes it uh, Harry more vulnerable and more likable because of that. But it, there, there's a great distinction between how Harry is brought up and then all of a sudden how Harry has this... I would dare say undeserved fame. And now he kind of has hold this. Up. No, no, wait, wait, hold on. Time is this off. the Slytherin in you? Uh, hold on. And then he has this kind of undeserved favoritism. Uh, and I wonder if Dumb- Dumbledore did that purposely because he knew that Harry was going. He's like the LeBron James of the Wizarding World. Oh, don't care. <laughs> Fair enough. Teachers have favorites. Maybe not every year. Maybe not every class, but teachers have favorites. You can think back to at least one or two teachers in your life Mm -hmm. who had a favorite. And maybe that favorite deserved it. Maybe that favorite was actually really good. That's true. Like, Snape favors Malfoy. Yeah, we have a lot of people here in the comments saying that Snape Snape favors Malfoy. And 100%, he does. And I'm not saying that's right, by the way. It isn't. It's not right. Okay. Well, but I'm just saying Neville gets favored by Professor Sprout. Yep. You know, like, but even though it's not the same house, like, whatevs, it's fine. People, <laughs> people, people are eviscerating me saying <laughs> that it's not undeserved. I, come on, guys. Okay, I'll be real with you. I was a teacher for many years prior to ending up on television and now podcasting. Um, I can tell you, I had some favorites, and it wasn't sure. like. Like, oh, everyone bow down to this person. But when you get those kids that, you know, you see that spark and you want to jump on it and really help it grow, this is something that Minerva McGonagall is passionate about. And Harry has this innate ability that he is amazing at it. As a chorus and band teacher, when I had students who excelled at music but also were hungry to do well, not just like they're innately awesome and they mess around the class, but like they will do the work. They will practice. They will help out. They'll do all these things. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get a little extra special treatment. Sure. Yeah. And another thing that happens here, too, that's something that the author does that I really like is that Harry kind of dips his toes into feeling a tad superior when he does get this it's the first present aside uh, no, from I know. And Hagrid's the, present. <laughs> I like it because he has this thing with Malfoy, and he kind of busts Malfoy's balls a little bit. And so does Ron, uh, especially after Malfoy's one saying, what do you know about a Weasley? You couldn't even afford the handle. Uh, 
he kind of dips his toes into this of using this against yeah. Malfoy to make mm-hmm. himself feel a little bit better. So it's not that Harry is wrong in doing that. It's it's something that I, I I'm not sure I would have expected from the humble, full of humility Harry Potter. You do know we're talking about an eleven year old boy, right? Oh, of course. Eleven year old boy who finally found out that he belongs somewhere. Sure. Who found a bully that reminds him of his cousin who has picked on him and his friends that he holds dear. And he finally finds, not only am I the boy who lived, but I'm really good at flying. I feel really confident about myself. He's right. going to have those moments. Sure. You know, and now he and Ron kind of like living on the wild side a little oh. bit. I, they were saying that after they saw the three-headed dog, you know, rather than being scared, they're, they're kind of thirsty for more adventure. So this is just this is just 11-year-olds being 11-year-olds. So, you know, they've got these little spats. And they want to see how far they can push and, each and other. And yet, yet we have Hermione here on one end of the spectrum, as on the other end of the spectrum from the from Ron and Harry, saying, "Oh, you think this is a? I think this is a reward for breaking rules." And all of a sudden, you think that you can mm-hmm. just have this. Uh, I love this. So I suppose you think it's a reward for breaking rules. Came an angry voice from just behind them. <laughs> Hermione was stomping up the stairs, looking disapprovingly oh at the package in Harry's hand. I thought you weren't speaking to us, said Harry. Yes, don't stop now. It's doing us so much good, said Ron. (laughs) And Hermione marched away with her nose in the air. You know, it's funny. As we read this chapter this week, um, our governor in the state of Rhode Island is asking upon Rhode Islanders to tattletale on each other. And they're not listening to like the rules about mm. social distancing and masks. And a lot of people were like, who's going to tattletale? And I just kept thinking, Hermione, Hermione would. Hermione totally would. Hermione would definitely be tattletale. But you know, it's like, funny that you say that because at the end of this chapter, she has such a great arc that tracks perfectly. She lies. She lies. And she lies for the sake, well... Why do you think she lies? Okay, so we're saying, of course, you know, they end up poking fun of her, saying, like, you know, this is why no one wants to be your friend. And they end up finding on Halloween night, when the troll is left in the dungeon, that Hermione's in the bathroom. The boys lock her in accidentally, then realize she's in there, and they go and save her. Hermione lies, saying that she tried to defeat the troll herself, and the boys came in to rescue her. And it's weird because she didn't need to lie. She could have just said, I was going to the bathroom and the boys knew I was in here Mm. or they heard me scream and they came to save me. Part of me thinks then that she shouldn't have been in that bathroom to begin with. She was fine to be in the bathroom. I think this was her way of being like, I'll get dirty with you guys. Yeah. But there was no need for her to lie. They, They still would have been awarded points for being heroic. Had she literally sure. been like, I was in the bathroom, I didn't hear Dumbledore say, everybody clear out, there's a troll, mm-hmm. and the boys could have come to help her because someone in their house, their friend, was in the bathroom and they wanted to warn her. Like, yeah. she didn't need to lie. So it's either either really smart thinking on her part, which I doubt, I feel like she would have been so sh- shaken up that she would be like, oh, show the guys but that I can But she's been like, quick on her them. feet. She has been quick on her feet. And I would probably argue then that the lie is quick on her feet because she's trying to, I don't think ingratiate herself, but she r- at least recognizes. And it elevates them. Right. And it, I think there's two things at play here. One, there's narrative force, right? We need a reason for them to continue being friends. We need something to solidify that friendship. We we had the run-in with Fluffy uh, last chapter, which aids that. But they're still busting Hermione's balls for being the way, for being Hermione, right? Um, they, they need, the author needs the boys to trust her. Yes. I'm sure that there were other ways to do that. But this right here solidified it. Yeah, so there's one thing. There's narrative force, right? We need the boys to trust her. How do we get there? How do we get her? How do we get them to trust her? And that is, well, have her do something that she is not capable or hasn't been uh, allowing herself to do, which is break the rules. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, since we've met her, she's all about the rules. Get your get your robes on. You're gonna be we're gonna be arriving soon. Yada yada. So and that that denotes a major change for Hermione. Not only is she. Uh, trying to be friends with them, but she changes herself in order to facilitate our, our friendship. But I think what comes out of that 
I think mostly is the fact that Hermione herself uh, is capable of change. She is capable of doing things uh, the boys' way, and the boys are capable of of putting themselves, you know, on the on the mm-hmm. on a limb for her, mm-hmm. uh, which again solidifies that friendship, which is a big deal. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think that this is the bit where, like, it is more solidified Gryffindor. Mm. You know? Absolutely. It's, Gryffindors it's, play, they don't play dirty as a Slytherin, but Gryffindors occasionally play a little dirty. Elva here on Facebook says she didn't want to get them in trouble. Now, would the boys be in trouble for rescuing her? See, I don't think they would. See, I don't think they would either. Because if they, to me, it's like if she was trying to catch the troll and they were trying to stop her and save her, they'd still be just as heroic if she was in the loo and they were going to save her. Is it because Ron busted her balls in the? Can you stop sorry, saying that. Is it because is it because Ron made fun of her in Chom's class that the boys felt obligated to go get her, and then she felt like. Oh, these kids, these guys came to get me and they helped save me. I need to do them a solid or I need to do all of us a solid. Like, do you, do you think that's part of it? Because like, it's it's about friendship, right? Hermione has yet to make any friends. At least that's the way that it yeah, feels th- in the text. I think, it's, I think it's multifaceted. I think no matter what, Ron and Harry are Gryffindors. So they're going to do what's right. They're going to be brave and help out somebody in mm-hmm. general. That's even if it wasn't Hermione, if it was, you know, Anyone, any aside from Malfoy, but probably even Malfoy, <laughs> they probably still would have helped him out because we know that they do that. Um, <laughs> so it's that's who they are innately. But I think especially because it's Hermione and they know that she is in danger's way because of them that they have to go do it. And the the choice that I think the author makes here with Hermione, uh, having her be so cut, so deeply cut by Ron's words. Mm-hmm is uh, not only is it effective for Hermione, the character, because uh, eventually that kind of, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, it kind of foreshadows the fact that there's going to be a relationship that buds between the two of them or that, that blooms between the two of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the person that you love most cuts you most deep, right? Yeah. So if you if you wanted to take that leap, agreed. A little bit of a logic jump there. Uh, well, a bit of a logic jump there. Big one. Uh, but you could make that argument if you really wanted to. But what we've said, a commandment of Mary and Blake Media is relationships are what matter most. That is it. If there is no, if there are no relationships, and whatever you're trying to write or produce or put on television, there is no point in doing it. There is none. <laughs> if you don't have the correct relationships, don't even bother. Because yes. if you don't have the relationships between people and how they interact with each other, then there's no drama. There's no comedy. There's no horror. There's nothing. So. You have to be able to invest in those relationships. So it speaks to Hermione's character about how vulnerable she can Mm. be, but it really speaks more to the relationship that is starting to form and how that vulnerability informs our (sighs) perception perception of her. Yes, Um, but also it informs our. um, This is a really bad word, but our caring. Our ability, okay. ability to invest. I see it as like a blood brother oath. You know what I mean? You're gonna have, you know, in like the traditional like kids movies, the preteens, how they do that little blood oath, and there's always the one who's like squeamish, like I don't know if I want to do it, but they do it anyway. Mm-hmm. That's what Hermione did by doing this little lie. While we're here wrapping things up, Snape, um, Harry like avoids Snape's eyes, as does Hermione. Yeah. And what I wonder if Snape was trying to do was use legitimacy on Harry, like being able to read his mind and see like what the heck happened, you know, because obviously Snape, we saw him running down a different corridor. Um, So I don't know if he was giving him this piercing glare because he was trying to read his thoughts and see Mm -hmm. what actually ended up happening. But of course, Harry and Hermione, um, don't maintain eye contact with Snape. Their their heads are hung because they're really embarrassed of what's going on. You know, uh, uh, as we were just talking, something kind of popped into my head. Ooh. 
Hopefully it wasn't a nargle. <laughs> no, no nargles. <laughs> that was good. That was so good. You deserve this. <laughs> that was good. Something popped in my head. Her- Hermione, at the I-, I think at the end of the chapter with the troll, n- senses or at least acknowledges there is an implicit acknowledgement that rule breaking is okay if it serves for the greater good. Mm. But again, we're, we're talking about the idea that we don't know like what the purpose of the lie is. It's not, that is not explicit. It's implicit, but not explicit. And implicit in that is Hermione was in the bathroom. We don't know. We, we don't know if she was supposed to be in that particular bathroom. Cause like, what if it's like, what if the kids are supposed to be in a certain space of Hogwarts at that time? They're not allowed to go other places. You know what I mean? Like, I guess I, I guess think she's in an okay bathroom. We haven't been told otherwise that she's not. Sure. She's in the girls' bathroom. She's in a bathroom that she's allowed to be so in. So implicit in that is that she's in the bathroom and she's crying. Yeah. And she's upset. And she's upset because of Ron and Harry. I wonder if she lies because she doesn't want to admit that she was crying and she was upset because of two boys. Like, it's okay to break the rules because she is trying to avoid the fact that her courage and her strength is at is in question you see what i'm saying yeah i wonder if she's lying because she doesn't want anybody to think that she is she is soft Hmm. see what i'm saying i do that's the only thing i can think of hey it's something. It's something to go on because I do think that it is kind of this nebulous thing that happens. But it solidifies this trio. They go back to their rooms and they eat some leftovers. Yeah. In just a very Hogwarts way, they just always end these moments with, with delicious food. But in the <laughs> middle of this chapter, we have Quidditch. So we're not going to spend too much time on Quidditch because the next chapter is literally titled Quidditch. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but we get to hang out with Oliver Wood, who breaks things down about this amazing sport, gets Harry really excited, and we're going to be delving into more of the ins and outs of Quidditch, I'd hope, next episode, just because the meat of this episode was really what happened on Halloween and the exchange between Draco and Harry. I mean, when I think of Draco and Harry... You know, Harry, gosh, like we think of what he's done to to Draco, even in like the later books or movies, you know, they really battle it out. Even though Harry, yes, is a Gryffindor, it doesn't mean that he doesn't fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Fight fight against this bully of his. Right, right. Um, the, hmm, that's a good thing. Um I would say the th- the stuff with Malfoy is a big deal, and we, I think in due course we should probably get to that. What we should really take out of this chapter in terms of the Quidditch itself is the author's ability once again to subtly, and in this case not so subtly, but introduce you slowly mm-hmm. to these really important facets of a game that is bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect uh, descriptor. Bananas. It, it is banana. Bananas. Uh, that's what that, <laughs> that's what Quidditch is, at least in terms of the book itself. I remember reading it, think, and I, I already had the benefit of watching the films, so it was kind of an unfair thing. Mm. But looking back on it as I reread this chapter and the next chapter, I was like, how in God's name could anybody, how could anybody get an idea of what Quidditch is? Um, because it's just so wild. But then again, we're already, we're introduced slowly to the facets of Quidditch so that when we do get to Quidditch next chapter, yeah. we're, we're great. I remember watching Game of Thrones mm-hmm. when, uh, when we watched Game of Thrones, uh, where, oh no, where is it? Oh, here it is. You know nothing, Jon Snow. When we watched Game of Thrones, I remember watching that first season again, and they slowly introduced yeah. you to all the characters, all of the families, all of the religions, all of the stuff that went along with it, so that when you got to the meat of it towards the end of the at end of the season, you were pretty familiar with all of it, and you. I remember thinking, what a masterful job mm-hmm. of introducing you to this world. 
and dare I say, Quidditch is probably the most, one of the most fleshed out things that the author does in this entire series. It's inspired Muggle Quidditch. And if you guys have not taken a trip down YouTube and searched Brooms Up, the Muggle Quidditch documentary, you're missing out. <laughs> and you need to check it out. Or you can search The Roadshow Quidditch and you'll find me interviewing local Rhode Island Quidditch players. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> um, But yeah, we get the basics of it and we're going to be heading into a game. I really do think that what this solidified for us is how loyal these three are going to be with each other, how they're willing to face danger to help one another, to help their peers. Um, that kind of things that are dangerous almost eggs them on. You know, Harry and Ron, the beginning of the chapter, seeing that three-headed dog excited them. Sure. They wanted to kind of find out what's next. And now they get to find this troll and they're going to be, th- this excites them. Yeah. And, and listen, it's not a coincidence that we get Fluffy and now we get the troll. Ladies and gents, we are halfway through this book. Can you believe it? This is the inciting incident that mm-hmm. propels the rest of the book. And uh, it's also not by coincidence that the three, our, our trio, solidifies their friendship. Yep. They, they understand each other. They appreciate each other for what they give to the friendship. And most importantly, it's not a coincidence that the inciting incident is is introduced by Quirrell. Oh, my gosh. Troll in the dungeon. It and, just faints. And Quirrell <laughs> faints, which... Again, one more t- one more thing is a perfect sleight of hand from the author. Oh yeah, Quirrell is the one who introduces the troll. He's the one who faints. Mm-hmm. There's no chance he's the bad guy. It's got to be Snape because Snape didn't meet his eyes. And it's it's masterful writing. And it's not a coincidence that we're halfway through the book and this is what what propels the rest of the book. We have a few friends online, um, you know, shouting out the last paragraph of this, of this chapter, just kind of running back to the trio. But from that moment on, Hermione Granger became their friend. There are some things you can't share without ending up liking each other. And knocking out a 12 foot mountain troll is one of them. <laughs> no, I agree. You know, going back to the curl. So we get curl being the one that comes in. He's of course the dark arts teacher and he is afraid of the troll. And even when the teachers storm into the bathroom, right. um, you know, he is quivering. He does not want to deal with this troll and Snape's there kind of given this evil eye to Harry and Hermione. As I said, I'm wondering if he was trying to read their minds at that moment sure. to see what was going on. But it shows you the blindness that Harry has. Immediately he dismisses Quirrell. I mean, there's no, there's not even a reason to consider Quirrell. It's about Snape. Oh yeah, Snape it's about was the Snape. one like being dodgy, running around the corridor. And can we just kind of give like here we were being like, oh McGonagall, you're so kind, you are so gracious, and spending all this money on a Nimbus two thousand. McGonagall only gives these kids five points for Gryffindor for right. defeating a mountain troll and saving <laughs> another student's life. Whereas Snape, I feel like would have given five thousand points <laughs> that it happened to Malfoy. So can we talk about by the way? Also, Hermione is the one who, you know gets on Ron about doing the swish and flick and or the Wingardium Leviosa. Mm-hmm. Yet when it comes down to it, when they de- help when he they just start does it. He, he he's does it because Hermione is the one who teaches them the right way. True. You know, it this is a different thing than the movies in the sense that Hermione does help him in class. You know, she's fixing how to speak well in class to do the spell. But when it comes down to the troll, rather than Hermione underneath the sink going, swish and flick, Ron, swish and flick, Ron just does it. By the so, way, we're, we're going to get a swish and flick t shirt oh, in, in the Mary. We're, we're, getting, we're gonna get it's all the swish favorites. and flick. Um but I loved this because I feel like sometimes the movies dumb Ron down and they make the brave moments go to Harry or Hermione or they kind of just change things up. And yeah. this was a moment like Ron did this. Ron not only remembered how to do it, but he did it in a moment of terror. Right, you know what sure. I mean? Yeah. He did it when he needed to do it. So um, shout out to you, Ron Weasley. Angela asks, what is the point scale and what is the most that you get? Well, it's funny that you say that, Angela. I know you have yet to read the books, so I'm not going to I'm not going to give away what happens at the end right now. But I th- I feel like it's whatever the hell the teachers want to give. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to look at. There probably is something on Pottermore that says like the most points you can give or the most points that were awarded in one year. Um, and then yeah, you just win the house cup, so you're like world champs. The last thing I want to I call out here, uh, once again, is the author's writing. She does, uh, um, her writing is so specifically virtuous and, uh, um tactile that it's really incredible you get a real sense of what you're coming up against and my favorite part of this chapter is this quietly as possible they crept along the next corridor after snape's fading footsteps he's heading for the third floor harry said but ron held up his hand can you smell something Uh, yes harry sniffed and a foul stench reached his nostrils, a mixture of old socks and a kind of public toilet no one seems to clean. And then and then they heard it, a low grunting and the shuffling footfalls of gigantic feet. Ron pointed at the end of the passage to the left, something huge was moving towards them. They shrank into the shadows and watched as it emerged into a patch of moonlight. It was a horrible sight. Twelve feet tall, its skin was dull granite gray. Its great lumpy body like a boulder with its small bald head perched on top like a coconut. Hmm. It had short legs, thick as tree trunks with flat, horny feet. The oh. smell coming from, its, r- coming from it was incredible. It was holding a wooden club which dragged along the floor because its arms were so long. What? I, I, like... You can see it, and you can, you can smell, smell it. it. The, the dirty old public oh. toilet that you know you've been like the like the toilet like the bathrooms at Fenway. Nobody cleans the, ba- oh the bathrooms at Fenway. I was thinking I was an RA in college, and one of the things you have to do every once in a while for the older dorms is you have to make sure that people are cleaning their bathrooms, like when they have yep. their own quad bathrooms that was one of my least favorite jobs because there are some disgusting human beings especially of the college age who've never cleaned a bathroom before if you saw my bathroom my senior year college oh (laughs) that's when i read that that paragraph that's all i was imagining is i was back in the dorm walking down and smelling it get stronger and stronger (laughs) it's funny that you i was thinking of fenway i was thinking of fenway park in the bathrooms there with the old troughs at least that's fun yeah that's true (laughs) i was just patrolling making sure nobody was smoking making Making sure they cleaned their bathrooms and um, dealing with people sneaking pets in the that, dorm. That's a fun fact for those of you who are not from Boston and never been to Fenway Park, especially going to the men's bathroom. Back in the day before uh, the Fenway got modernized in the early 2000s, you used to go there. I used to go there as a kid with my dad and we'd go to the bathroom and you have to go to the men's bathroom. At the time, there weren't stalls. There were no urinals. They had a couple of toilets, but they had these troughs. Stop. And all the guys would go up to the trough and you didn't you didn't look to the side. Oh no. I mean you never do anyway. No no no, but especially but you're in a trough now. now. And I was like uh, an okay, eight, let's not 10 hover year old on kid. This no no, topic. I'm just saying and when you when I thought when I heard this this very descriptive writing, I thought of the old troughs at Fenway. So, oh, we need to move on to something happy <laughs> like pumpkins. <laughs> Oh, so this this man. wraps up this chapter. Um, do we have any email questions yes, that we, we wanted to tech into? And of course, the next chapter will be all about Quidditch. Oh, do you want to take a different that. perspective? Oh, do you want to go first? Uh, I did. I wanted to think of. Oh my God, who, who was I trying? Who was I trying? Who was I thinking of today? I don't know. There don't was know. Malfoy. There was Flitwick. Yeah. There- all right. Yeah. I kind of want to do Malfoy. <laughs> okay. I kind of want to do Malfoy. Okay. Malfoy sees Professor McGonagall get this kid. No, he doesn't know it's from Professor McGonagall because it gets flown in with an owl. Yeah, but he sees that Harry... It's it's approved. It just so happens that Professor McGonagall is the one who makes him a Sika. And all of a sudden... He doesn't know this, though. Malfoy doesn't know it. He doesn't know that yet? No. He's just... So Harry gets the broom and the note says, don't open this now. And then he sees Malfoy, and Malfoy, they end up saying how it's even then, even then. All of a sudden, he knows he's given the broom. All of a sudden, this kid, Harry freaking Potter, you're getting the movie and the book mixed up. You're you're right, Harry freaking Potter gets this. Harry freaking Potter gets this broom. He's not even supposed to have it, and everyone's just fine with it. Everyone's just like, "Yay, Harry, you got a broom!" 
because and, he's Harry Potter. I know, and <laughs> I can see why that would piss me off. Okay, be careful with your language. Okay, I would see that would get me angry. It would mm-hmm. totally get me angry because what are we doing? This kid ain't supposed to have one. Now all of a sudden he has one and everyone's just okay with it. I'm Draco Malfoy. I'll I'm tell you the what, man. There are going to be a lot of Gryffindors who have very mixed feelings about this that are not written about in the book. Because A, they're going to be excited because Harry is a great seeker and he is going to bring their house glory. But on the flip side, this is not fair. And things being fair mm-hmm. is one of the most important traits to a Gryffindor. And so, you know... Ah, oh, it is. It's very tough. And here's Draco, who has his own broom, probably mm. at home, who want, who is a, knows how to play Quidditch, and he's not allowed. Sure. How the heck was Harry allowed? Oh, it's all thanks to you, Malfoy. That's true. Oh. Uh, Suzanne says, by the way, Dartmouth frat houses have troughs. Yeah, uh, Suzanne, I appreciate you. I'm out on Dartmouth. <laughs> uh, out. I went to St. Anselm College. I almost went to Dartmouth. Oh, you freaking Dartmouth I know. kids. Well, the good thing I didn't, Blake. I wouldn't have dated I think me. I hate Dartmouth almost, almost more than I hate Harvard. And just because. It's just because. You know, one of the top 50. Why do you hate Harvard? Because ha- freaking Harvard kids. Is it because I dated here. one? It, that's one of them. It's one of the reasons. Just Harvard. Get okay. out of here with it. No. no what, Let one me of the, tell you. One of the top. Don't hate. One of the it's top. Like Hogwarts. One of the top Can 50 rivalries in the country. <laughs> Thank you. Is actually Dartmouth versus St. A's rugby. Whatever. It's just throwing that out there. Okay. We had, we had a documentary made about it. That sounds really riveting. It is. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I hate Harvard. All the Harvard, okay. They all think they're smart. They, so they, they think they're at Hogwarts. No, you asked me the question. I'm telling you. I'm done. I'm over it. <laughs> all right. Fine. <laughs> fine. <sighs> Do we have our questions from our friends? Yes. Okay. Uh, emails. So we're going to read these emails, ladies and gents. Uh, and if you are in the podcast app, please send your emails. Or if you don't like sending the emails, that's fine. Join us live, Mary and Blake, on all the social media platforms, whether it is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. We're all there. And when we're live every Monday and Wednesday okay. at 8 o'clock. All right. This one comes from Jen. She says, what would be the reason your parents had to send you a remember all, Mary? Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, yeah, literally like everything. I mean, I had I had my big orange backpack in high school, the L.L. Bean one that had like the multiple extra chambers mm-hmm. because I was so afraid that I'd be forgetting stuff that I just carried around pretty much my entire locker with me at all times. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that would be one of the chief things that I would just forget, like my book or my work or something. Yep. How about I, you, Blake? I've re- people who know me know I'm a very um, forgetful person. I forget everything unless I am focused on it. That part- then I remember every little smidgen of details that I need mm-hmm. to know. But if somebody tells me, "Hey, Blake, you need to do X, Y, and Z by Friday," I will. Bloop. I. Pfft, Oh, I'll get to Friday and I'll be like, oh, yeah, dude, I was supposed to do that. Sorry. This is like an ongoing thing in our relationship where I'll be like, Blake, you're going to do that? Yeah, sure I am. Okay, well, why don't you tell Siri to remind you Yeah, like, that. And I honestly mean, yes, <laughs> I, I will do it. Like, I truly will do it. But then I don't. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, the next one is, if you get a flown on a broomstick at age 11, where would you have Ooh. gone? Mary, what do you got? Um... Let's see. I probably wouldn't have done anything too crazy. I probably just would like fly to a farm. (laughs) I wouldn't want to go abroad because I don't want to get like stuck in the country. I probably would just want to go somewhere like a farm with hay bales. So just in case I fell. (laughs) (laughs) I'd be okay. Like a nearby farm that I could walk home from. <laughs> what? <I'll take> it. <laughs> Makes me wanna shout. <laughs> You're awesome. You're welcome. You Blake. fly near bay hails of bay uh, bales, of, bales of hay. <laughs> I got you, Blake. Oh, Hillary wrote in and says, "Do you deck out? Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what about what about me? What about you? Oh. Where?" <laughs> Ooh, Where would you fly? Shades of lost of- right there. What about you, Ben? What about you? Where would you fly at age 11? Fenway Park. 
Of course. I would totally would have fl- flown to Fenway. Yeah, he it's wants my... to go see the troughs. We know. <laughs> We've true. heard about them. Gotta go to the bathroom. Go to Fenway. <laughs> <laughs> um, Victoria Larkin on Facebook says she would totally cross the Atlantic and go to England. See, I'd be afraid I would get tired and that sharks would eat me. We gotta think. Yeah, at 11. Would you do it at 11? That's the question. Wait, wait, shark killed someone in me. I know. That's oh ridiculous, dude. It's first kill of a, of a shark <gasps> of, a, of a human in Maine. In, in Maine history. Get the heck out of here, sharks. Maine's been a state forever. Get out of here. Freaking shocks. Okay. All right, this one comes from Hillary. She says, do you deck out on Halloween decorations like Miguel does with Christmas? The answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. We do have a Halloween inflatable. It's a big freaking ghost. It's a nine foot tall Casper the Friendly Ghost coming out of a pumpkin and it waves. I hate that thing. It rotates and waves. I hate that thing. It is so obnoxious. For those of you who listen to This Is Us 2, it's our show about This Is Us. We have an obsession with Miguel and his love of inflatables. So, But we decorate the rest of the house. I have, I decorate each child's room every season. Summer is the hardest season, but we do have Patriotic, we have like Flamingo, and then we have Shark Week. Uh, But once it hits fall, oh, we are all in. Y'all been sleeping on my boy Miguel. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, just had to play the Miguel sounder. Uh, The next one, Uh, what's the next one, Mary? Um, oh. You need to scroll down because this is something we already talked about. I get it. But- I, I never quite understand why Hermione just didn't say that she was in the bathroom and hair. This is what we just okay. talked about. Sorry. Uh, that, that's what we got for the emails then. Okay. Does anybody Very good. who's live have an extra question for us? We'll give you one minute. Um, and for everybody else who's joining us. Well, there's the a little podcast. bit of a delay for the live feed. So you, oh. we just got to give them a little bit more time. Okay. Okay. For our friends who are listening to this via the podcast app, we want to thank you so incredibly much for taking the time to listen, for hitting subscribe, for leaving us reviews. I'm actually going to take a moment to read a review while we see. If anybody has a an additional question on our live feed, we just got a couple of great uh, reviews. As a matter of fact, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, some really good ones. Oh, thank you. And thank I, you. I, I think you know the people are becoming very, very like creative with their reviews oh. and and using as much Harry Potter language as possible. Yes. So when I say do a review, yes, please, ladies and gents, go be creative and use as much HP language as you can. So let's let the nerds out, man. Let the nerds fly. Um, this one says, the book club you always needed. I found Mary and Blake while looking for Outlander podcasts. And when they announced they would be reading Harry Potter, I was so excited as a first time reader of the series. Being able to watch the live podcast brings so much joy to the week. You never know what is going to happen, whether it be a sneaky fly getting stuck in Mary's hair or their precious cat stealing the show. Mary and Blake have given all of us um, a group of people to hang out with twice a week where we can let our inner nerds out. So say yes to this magic. Magical adventure and listen for all the Harry Potter wonderful. I'm a nerd. You got to let me fly. That's what I could. That's all I think of. <laughs> it, it's from it's from the other guys. He's like, I'm a peacock. You got to let me fly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friends. Well, I don't think I saw any questions pop on up, so I think we'll be closing up the episode. Please remember to email us at marionblakemedia at gmail dot com with questions in regards to next week, which is about Quidditch. Uh, we'll be doing that, of course, Monday night. Thank you so much for spreading the word about the Potterverse, whether sharing it in your stories or on your social media podcasts. Honestly, get learned about best by word of mouth. So if this has has brought joy to your life. As I said, please feel free to share it, whether with specific Potter friends of yours or just on your walls. Melissa says that she loves the other guys. You're welcome, Melissa. That is going to be my new t-shirt. I'm a nerd. You're going to let me fly. And then I'm going to have a Harry Potter broom underneath it. Um, do you think it's possible that Rochelle says that it's Professor Snape was glaring at Quirrell and not Harry? Ooh, maybe, maybe. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. We'll we have to think about that. I mean, that's a possibility. Uh, we'd have to. I think he also just glares all the time. Especially, yeah, he definitely does glare, and especially at Harry. He I is would R B F. Oh <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, you know, I I kind of want to look at R S F. Resting Snape face. <laughs> That's your new shirt. That's the new shirt. <laughs> yep, resting Snape face. You're welcome, America. <laughs> um, Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin, for your review. Uh, All right. Yeah, cool. Um, I think we're going to close up the show. Let's do it.
Once again, we wanted to remind you that you're more than welcome to go to jointhenerdclan.com, where as little as $2 a month, you get to be part of our Patreon community to help continue this happening. Um, Blake and I, of course, podcast and do these live videos because they bring us great joy, because it brings community to people, uh, especially in times like now while we're here in this pandemic in 2020. We want to make sure that we can uh, do things that bring light and joy and... I don't know, laughter to as many people Resting as we Snape can face. and know that your contributions um, it's you know less than a cup of coffee um, really do go a long long way for us so thank you so much for those of you who are our members at either outlandercastclan.com or join the nerdclan.com yes thank you everybody very much and obviously thank you for the reviews that you've been giving us uh, being creative and having fun and talking about nerds and you guys you're the nerd clan man we you. you we gotta let you fly we gotta let right. you fly that's right so thank you once again I hope that you all have a marvelous week make sure to head on over to hashtag minute with Mary on Facebook if you need anything um, beauty or skincare related I would love to hook you up and on that note my name is Mary Larson my name is Blake mischief managed.